so that was a great start from uh, John on an introduction to uh, Redfish, and I'm going to talk about a, uh, a practical implementation uh, of it. Uh, as John said, I'm Mike Thompson. Uh, I work for uh, the Shroff Group within uh, Envent, uh, primarily doing uh, small management processors. Um, so from a practical perspective, uh, if you're a thermal engineer, you probably don't really care too much about uh, Redfish. You just need some way of interacting with a cooling device and getting uh, data from it and being able to control it and hopefully getting uh, notice if uh, something is broken. So all you really care about is being able to uh, access sensors uh, have it, and in our world, it's uh, controls or effectors are uh, what you use to twiddle a knob inside of your cooling device. Uh, and alarms are a relatively new thing to, uh, to Redfish. Um, traditionally, you've used um, uh, some other uh, uh, protocols like Modbus or something like that uh, to uh, talk to the uh, cooling devices. Uh, OCP has standardized on uh, Redfish for all of the devices, uh, including racks and power systems and servers and storage. And now the uh, cooling devices are uh, starting to participate uh, in that too. Um, so uh, what we have to do um, to, uh, to talk to a, a sensor and Again, we don't really care that much whether it's Redfish or Modbus or something, but we really need to know uh, uh, if we talk to a particular sensor, um, you know, units of measure, uh, what it's capable of measuring, uh, alarm thresholds, what its current reading is. There's a lot of uh, detailed information that we need to know about a uh, particular sensor. Um, and some of the other uh, protocols like um, Modbus aren't uh, self-describing. Um, and that's one of the, the nice features about uh, Redfish is that uh, not only can you ask a sensor for a, uh, a reading, but you can ask a sensor to describe uh, what it is and what it's capable of and what you're capable of doing with a sensor. Um, so in this case, we've got a, a critical alarm uh, set at uh, 45 degrees. Uh, uh, you can ask the sensor whether that uh, uh, value is changeable or not. And if the value is changeable, you can actually send a uh, command to the sensor and say, change your critical alarm to 50 degrees C. And it will. Um, for controls, um, these are all of these cooling devices have controls built into them but they don't necessarily have a management interface uh, into them. You know, you can walk up to the front panel and you can change a desired water temperature uh, on it, but it would be a lot more convenient in a, a data center environment if you could uh, query a particular uh, cooling device. In this case, uh, um, this whole project was done for rear door coolers. Um, a rear door cooler is probably going to have two control loops in it. One is going to control the uh, the valve that controls the water flow rate, and that's going to be based on uh, well, lots of different things depending on on how you set up your system. Um, some of them are capable of doing it on uh, uh, like the outlet uh, water temperature. Uh, it could do it on a CPU temperature, it could do it on differential water temperature. Uh, and uh, that's one of the things that you uh, need to uh, be able to uh, fiddle with in a control is how the control itself actually works. Uh, another thing it, that you may or may not want to go fiddle with uh, is in the controls uh, world, they call them the PID. Uh, values. And these are the values that the inside control loop uses uh, to determine uh, if the, like, again, the current setting of the uh, water flow rate is uh, not quite what it needs to be in order to maintain uh, an outlet water temperature. 
uh, these uh, PID values uh, will affect um, how fast and how severe a change it will make to the uh, current uh, valve opening in order to uh, get the uh, you know, desired temperature or whatever you've set it to um, uh, back on target. Uh, uh, it, it's kind of up to the, the uh, coolant uh, device manufacturer whether he wants you to fiddle with those values. So you may be able to see them uh, but they may not be uh, changeable from the uh, the network interface. Another one that you'd probably have in there is uh, fan control. And the fan control uh, could be uh, inlet temperature, outlet temperature, differential temperature. There's lots of different ways that you can uh, control the fan speed on there. Um, but the idea of the Redfish interface is you'd be able to go into the uh, controller for the cooling device and you'd say what do you have for controls and it says I have a cooling loop uh, uh, control and I have a fan speed control and then you say okay tell me about your cooling uh, loop control and it will tell you what values are currently set and uh, which ones you can uh, you can actually change. So uh, the way that we get uh, started on this is um, we decided to, uh, within the rear door cooler uh, group, uh, we decided to adopt uh, Redfish uh, since that's the, the one that uh, all the OCP devices so far have uh, used. It was uh, uh, not a difficult uh, choice. Um, and in order to, uh, to standardize the methodology for interacting with the cooling device, like John was saying, we have to uh, write this document uh, or a file called a, a profile. Uh, and I'm uh, a novice at this compared to John. Uh, so it was quite a learning experience and quite a challenge to go through the process to, uh, to actually create a profile. Um, the profile that you need for the cooling device is actually piggybacked on top of the uh, the base hardware management uh, profile that uh, John and his crew uh, already created uh, for uh, OCP uh, devices. So that one of the diagrams that John showed was uh, all of these uh, piggyback profiles uh, for storage and for uh, servers and for power. And then this is a new one uh, that we're uh, working on now for uh, cooling devices. Um, the fan control already existed, uh, excuse me, the fan speed reading existed, but controlling the fans didn't. Um, the temperature sensors and water valve position and stuff like that, we, we could get that, uh, but there was no way to uh, describe a, a control uh, for the water valve uh, in Redfish. Um, so, uh, within the, uh, the, uh, the heat exchanger group, uh, we uh, created a, uh, a draft redfish schema uh, that included uh, effectors or controls. Um, and there's actually uh, two groups that we uh, worked with on that. One is the PCI Industrial Computer Manufacturers Group. Their uh, industrial IoT group is also uh, going to use Redfish. And they also decide, uh, found that uh, they needed controls and they didn't exist in Redfish. Uh, and we shared this with uh, our draft schema with uh, uh, DMTF. And DMTF was actually working on controls, but it wasn't uh, public. Uh, so uh, we didn't have access to their document. So uh, they shared us, uh, with us a, uh, an early work in progress version of uh, controls. And we shared uh, with them uh, uh, how we thought they should be uh, implemented. Uh, so uh, we, we created a, uh, a draft of a Redfish schema. Um, now, what John explained is that uh, there's uh, profiles and schemas. Um, and uh, DMTF created uh, this new version of uh, uh, Redfish schema uh, that included uh, controls. And then that allowed uh, us uh, to create a, a profile for the uh, cooling devices uh, that uh, used uh, the controls that uh, are in the work in progress uh, document uh, for, uh, uh, from uh, the DMTF. So uh, like John was saying, uh, you use uh, a standard web uh, protocol 
to uh, talk to the uh, to the device. Um, and most of these uh, cooling devices uh, have a web server built into them anyway. Uh, they've got a proprietary uh, web page, and you use the proprietary web page to interact uh, with the uh, the device. But if you've got a, a building management system or you want to uh, manage cooling on a on a larger scale, then uh, yeah, dealing with several different cooling devices with different uh, interfaces is uh, you know kind of an impossible task. Uh, so Redfish uses the web server that probably already exists in the cooling device uh, and uh, then uh, implements the, uh, the URLs or URIs uh, that are uh, called out for in the base hardware management uh, profile and uh, with additions that are in the, uh, the cooling profile. So uh, if you have a cooling device that supports Redfish, then um, you would uh, query the device to find out uh, what it is and what it's capable of and what it has for sensors and controls and what the sensors are reading and what the controls are capable of. And then you can have your building management system or cooling management system uh, adapt itself to the capabilities of a uh, cooling device. And that's one of the very, very nice features about Redfish is that it will describe what it's capable of doing and how you can interact with it. So you can have your um, management software adapt itself to a new device just by uh, plugging it in. And then your management software is just going to periodically pull the device and uh, get sensor readings. And uh, if events are implemented, then uh, you would react to, uh, say, a temperature event uh, coming out of the device. Um, this is what a, a sensor uh, is going to uh, look like if you query the, uh, a sensor and say, tell me about yourself, uh, then this is the data that's going to come back from it. And this is a, uh, a temperature sensor. It's a specifically a cabinet temperature sensor that's reading 30 degrees C. Uh, and down at the bottom, you can see uh, the alarm threshold. And there's other things like, uh, you know, accuracy and precision uh, and stuff that's on it. Uh, controls look very similar uh, to this, um, except that you'll get uh, slightly different values uh, out of this, like a set point, which is your, you know, your thermostat set point, and you'll get uh, other control values uh, out of uh, out of it instead of just sensor readings. And uh, some of these may be changeable, some of these uh, maybe not. Um, so this is a uh, evolving uh, technology. The uh, schema that came from uh, DMTF uh, that describes the controls that we need for the cooling devices is a, a work in progress. So that will be evolving. And the profile that we wrote that is based on the work in uh, progress, and it's an early draft uh, of that. So uh, we'd be uh, very interested in uh, getting any feedback uh, on um, how you would like to manage your cooling devices and interact with your cooling devices and uh, what we've done so far on uh, Redfish and uh, whether you think it works and what we need to do to improve it. And we've got the normal call to action on here. If you want more information on the, uh, the work that we're doing, uh, there's the uh, URLs for LinkedIn here uh, for the uh, uh, Rack and Power Group and for specifically for the door heat exchanger uh, group. 